Hello there. This is a quick screencast of the upcoming new caches feature in Open Daylight's InfraUtils project. I won't be showing any code here, but real quick, give an impression of the user experience for an end user administrator. So walk through the CLI commands. This should help understand the code once you look at the Garrett. Um, you can see here, I'm in my development environment, the Git repository of InfraUtils. The commit here is something that's currently up for review. Um, and I can build the InfraUtils project like usual, MVN clean install, and then start a Carafe environment, the Open Daylight's runtime container. What I want to do first in this Carafe is install a feature, a new feature called ODL InfraUtils caches. This is the feature that a project like Genius or Netvert or others wanting to use this new caches infrastructure would depend on. What this feature brings is an API and a command line interface, which offers, among other things, a cache list. Currently, there are no caches. Caches are created by code. There's a simple API called a cache provider, which you look up in the OSGI service registry, from which you can create a cache. The InfraUtils project includes an example. So if we install the sample feature, ODL InfraUtils caches sample graph feature, we get a new command called cache example hello. Before I run this command, I'm going to launch cache list. Cache list shows us how the installation of a bundle in cache example with a class sample service with caching impl created this cache dynamically. This caching framework in OpenData's InfraUtil is for an OSGI environment where caches can be created as bundles are loaded by features and will disappear if bundles are stopped. The cache here has the ID hellos. It has a description and it's anchored in a class. The ID and the description is not set in some configuration file or God knows what, but right there in the code when you use the cache provider API to obtain a cache, you have a builder where you set the ID and pass this so that the cache manager knows in which of your classes this particular cache is anchored. A cache also has policies and stats, and I'm going to talk to, about that in just a minute. What's important to understand here is that we're offering a caches framework from InfraUtil, not a cache framework, a caches in the plural. Every occurrence of a, every use of the cache provider to obtain a cache in every class creates a new small cache. Think of this similarly to the concurrent hash maps that are used all over the code today, but which are not monitorable, which are not configurable with policies, and most of which are unbounded. This new caches framework is intended as a drop-in replacement for all these places all over Open Daylight where their concurrent hash maps and the like are used. What I can do is use the example bundles CLI and say, hello world. The idea here is that this is a whatever code which takes a second. So the code deliberately has a small sleep, which makes this hello world take 386 milliseconds. If we check our cache, we can see that our cache has one entry now. If we do a hello world again, remember it was 386 milliseconds up here, it's now zero milliseconds because our cache has a cached entry for this hello world lookup. We can do another hello you there. Look up this again through 379 milliseconds. And if I do it again, 
takes zero milliseconds and our cache now obviously has two entries. I can do more things. I can, for example, do a cache clear. It successfully cleared all caches. And if I do a cache list now, we again have zero entries. And of course, our hello world will again the first time take a moment and the second time it'll be fast. Um, we can see that we have uh, stats and policies up here as well. One thing that you may have noticed is that the stats haven't moved much. The hit count and the miss count haven't moved. This is because this particular implementation of cache that's currently loaded and the feature allows you to actually have pluggable cache implementations. So while this first iteration is basically a facade over the Guava cache API, we could imagine implementing this with different caches in the future, different cache frameworks in the future. Um, this implementation will not hold stats if it's um, policy stats enabled is false. What I can thus do is use the CLI to set cache policy of hellos stats enabled to true. If I now check my policies, I can see that stats enabled became true. And we can do another lookup with world. Let me do two or three of them. And we now see that because our stats are enabled as a policy on this particular hellos cache, we get the stats. Behind this is a Google Guava cache implementation, but there could be another one telling us that we've had two hits and one miss. Um, we could, for example, tune these, the size of this cache as well. If I went back into the cache policy and set the max entries and made it perhaps two, well, let's make it one. Then we would see that if we do a call to the service like this again, this is now cached. Our cache has currently one entry, but it's also got max entries one only. So if we use another lookup like this, this would be slow, this would be fast, but the previous one will be slow again because our cache can only hold one entry as we can see in the cache list. I'm going to wrap it up with this. I hope this gave you a first impression of what this caches framework in Open Daylight's InfraUtils project can do for you. This can be expanded. Cache implementations could be um, other ones. There could be additional policies here. These stats are basically based on what the backing implementation can surface. Um, there's some work uh, that can still be done to expose this differently, have other uh, RPCs, but the core of the work um, for a first version is now complete. And projects such as Genius and Network could start using this caching framework. Thanks for your interest. See you.